Welcome to Partners in Conversation, a Center for Urban and Regional Excellence initiative. This is the second video in a series about leveraging community resources to address food access in Northwest Indiana. My name is Amanda Smith, and I am the Assistant Director of the Center for Urban and Regional Excellence, also known as CURE. With me today to discuss the eco-friendly mobile farm stand project as a method of addressing food insecurity is Ellen Charletta, Director of CURE and Professor in the School of Public and Environmental Affairs, and Bob Kopak, Founder and Executive Director of the Eco-Friendly Mobile Farm Stand Project. Welcome, Bob and Ellen. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, you are very welcome, and we are really happy. CURE is very happy to be able to provide this conversation to our community. We're really excited about sharing the work that's being done as partners, which was the topic of our very first Partners in Conversation on food access. And we're going to be continuing this conversation uh, today as well as in the future. So I'm happy to be here, and I'm looking forward to speaking with you, Bob. Thank you for having me. Very much appreciate it. Yeah, I thought I'd take a minute just in, and review what we talked about the last time so that we can refresh everybody's memory. We here at the Center for Urban and Regional Excellence are engaging in these conversations so that we can share the learning that's taking place when you bring together the university campus and the experts that are in our community. And in our first conversation, we talked about building partnerships as a way to improve our communities. We're taking a little deeper dive today and we're going to be discussing today a particular method or tool that is um, the brainchild of Bob Kopak so that he can share with us how it is that he came to think about providing this to the community and partnering with the community so that we can address the issues of food insecurity. So Bob is going to be sharing with us a little bit about the history of the eco-friendly mobile farm cart and how it came into being. And then we're gonna talk about uh, in a little bit more detail about food insecurity here in Northwest Indiana. Bob, would you um, share with us a little bit about the history of this initiative? Well, the history actually goes back, gosh, probably over 10 years ago when I was working in the electric shuttle business for an entrepreneur um, who was doing some programs with uh, electric shuttles. And at that time, states, governments, and municipalities started opening up in terms of having these particular electric vehicles called neighborhood electric vehicles or mm -hmm. low-speed electric vehicles legal in states, you know, with certain parameters, which made them street legal uh, in terms of how they were manufactured and how they were built and uh, uh, driven on the roads. So had the idea back then because food insecurity was such a huge issue. Um, my background is in uh, corporate social responsibility. Uh, so I was always on the other end where people were approaching me with programs or I had to develop programs for them by getting uh, various uh, organizations together uh, for foundations and uh, for, for large corporations. And it always stuck in my mind that these vehicles, because I kind of look at this idea of, not that it is as simple as, but just going from A to B. Uh, point A is where the food is. Point B is where the people are that can't get the food. Let's mm -hmm. take it to them. So these vehicles allow, allow that to happen, uh, you know, 10 or 12 years ago where, uh, we just kind of brought it to the attention of organizations, local community farms, that type of thing around the country. Um, but at the time it was more, they're available, you know, do you want them? No one had the funding to do, to do it. No, no one had the funding to pay for them. So uh, fast forward almost probably 10 years, I'm, I, I still, you know, kept involved in the news and the whole idea of food insecurity and realize that maybe this is something that we should do as a nonprofit or that I should do as a nonprofit. I'm no longer working with that particular company, but then what we can do is work as a community and work together to fund these vehicles to make sure they get in the hands of the organizations that can truly use them. And, and going back to the, the idea of going from point A to point B. So, 
that's how the pro program kind of evolved. And uh, so I started, started the nonprofit. And I, having grown up in the Gary area, was very familiar with the issue of food insecurity there, with the idea of the lack of access, particularly with grocery stores being built. And uh, reached out, luckily enough, I reached out to you folks who just understood the area, understood the issue, were nice enough to, you know, uh, open the doors and embrace the idea, embrace our mission to the point where are now where we were able to launch a eco-friendly mobile farm stand project with Faith Farms and Orchards in the Emerson neighborhood in Gary. There's so many interesting points there. I think um, I'm gonna touch on a couple of them. One is this role that uh, business has in promoting sustainability in our communities. Um, two is this really unique application of technology. I mean, technology changed and developed and now it brought not just an opportunity for, for business, but also for, for communities as well. So um, as a corporate social responsibility officer, can you talk a little bit about what, what that looked like and what it meant? To me, it was, it was kind of everything coming together in terms of me understanding the technology uh, along with understanding the need. And uh, it, just, it just kind of made sense. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not the end all. It is not the solution by any means. But right now, you know, it certainly can, can, can help. And when it comes to our program, the Eco-Friendly Mobile Farm Stand Project, not only is it uh, part of a solution for the issue of food insecurity, but it's sustainability clean air, it's climate change, any of the topics that are making the headlines literally every single day, in some fashion, we're addressing that issue. This little vehicle, the 72 volt electric vehicle, uh, no emissions, no gasoline, uh, you know, can drive around neighborhoods and get the job done to bring fresh fruits and vegetables from a, from a community garden or other sources to those who just do not have access. The other really cool thing about, which I don't know if many people realize for the uh, Faith Farms is we're using their solar panel system on the roof of the farm to charge the vehicle. So in terms of a sustainable cycle, you know, we're totally sustainable and uh, which is very exciting. And not that everyone has to have that for us to partner with, but it certainly was a huge plus. So that's, that's very exciting. So our program goes beyond you know, the issue of food insecurity. It gets the job done for that, uh, but it does it in an incredibly sustainable way. And uh, you know, every year, I, I think if, I haven't looked at the data, but I would imagine that it matches up uh, air quality issues, probably match up pretty well with areas of food insecurity. So if you're able to deliver uh, healthy food without polluting the air, it uh, can only help. Yeah, these, these issues are intertwined, right? So it, that's what I think is so unique about the project that you have with the, with the car. So you're addressing energy efficiency, which is affecting air quality, right? You're potentially serving as a tool to address the food insecurity issues. You're modeling this behavior of you know, local food provision and helping those who are interested in local foods actually provide that to people who may not have the resources to be able to travel to the stores. It's just, uh, it has enormous potential is what I, what I see. And so I thought I'd just, dig a little deeper on the food insecurity issue and share some resources with people. Um, so if they do want to learn more about that particular issue, you can have these resources. We're going to also put them out in our description for this particular session of Partners in Conversation when it does go out on YouTube. So the links will also be there as well. So uh, food insecurity is addressing the lack of 
well, the lack of adequate food to particular communities. And generally we attach that to these two things, lack of resources, like for example, transportation, or there being insufficient funds, um, low income, poverty, et cetera. And it, so it's measured, it's different than hunger. It's measured at a household level. Hunger is um, a consequence of food insecurity and food access. So you're, the eco-friendly mobile farm card is addressing the particular aspects of food insecurity that are connected to transportation, which I think is just fascinating, especially because it's also sustainable. So a couple other facts that people um, may want to know is that we've been measuring food insecurity for over 25 years. That would be the US Department of Agriculture. So we have a pretty good idea of what this looks like here in the United States. If you're wondering, well, how many people could possibly be food insecure in a, in a nation like ours? Before the pandemic, it was roughly 14%, so just under 15% of households in, back in 2011. And we were actually making a lot of progress up until 2019, when it went down to about 10% of households who experienced uh, food insecurity, and then came the pandemic. So that's something that we, we don't have the most current data on yet because we're still uh, collecting that is, but we do have some early insights on what has happened. And some early estimates coming out of Northwestern said that food insecurity has probably doubled during the pandemic. So what, what you had observed in your experience, Bob, you know, from being in, in Gary, living in this region, likely doubled in terms of its impact over the time of the pandemic. And so the, the timing of the eco farm card is just perfect, I think, for, for so many people who, because of many different circumstances are experiencing this. Um, it's really disconcerting that we could have as many as 20 to 30% of all people who are food insecure. And we do know that in the urban areas with kids, that can be as high as 40% are some of the estimates that I'm seeing now. So um, with 17 food deserts, roughly in, in Gary and over 25 in the Northwest Indiana region, um, it's certainly a need that needs to be addressed. And I know that you and I are gonna be talking a little bit more about food deserts with our partners IU Northwest is working with IU Bloomington so that we can have our students address this issue. And you're working directly with Pastor Curtis, right? Absolutely, yes, at Faith Farms. You know, right now uh, with the launch of the vehicle, it's kind of, it's towards the end of harvest season. But, uh, you know, come next spring, we'll be up and running to truly monitor the use of the vehicle in terms of how many miles it goes and what's the, the radius that it goes, you know, from the, in the neighborhood. Well, many factors we're going to look to make sure that it is working and, and, and getting the job done uh, for the people of Gary. Uh, so you know, collecting should, some data, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> collecting lots of data. The one thing I should add, though, is because this is an electric vehicle, no emissions. There is no reason why if the entryway of an auditorium, a gymnasium, a place like uh, the Genesis Center, it could go indoors and you don't have to worry about the fumes. So you can set up indoors in inclement weather or even over the winter if you have a source of vegetables to, to deliver, to have that, to go to one point to have people go to, that's feasible. Yeah, we'll have to um, really explore that with Pastor Curtis because if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, he does have a uh, few greenhouses, right? So it's yes. it's not just that it's a summer growing season that he is aiming to um, to uh, create. It actually he wants to have an, a year long initiative. Yes. So let's remind me, and we can we can explore the possibility of driving that cart right into the Genesis Center or another <laughs> location, <laughs> so that we can because certainly food insecurity is all year round, right? It doesn't well, take it doesn't take a break, right? So. Well. And yeah. you mentioned if I, I believe if uh, the USDA study also brings up the idea of a lack of access to transportation, mm -hmm. as well as it's, a big issue. Yeah, um, and, and in fact, thank you for that reminder. If you want to go out, it's the Economic Research Service of the USDA, which is the US Department of Agriculture, and they have a fascinating map out there. You can look at 
how many people are in your census track and what the estimates are for food access. And absolutely, transportation is critical in that in determining whether or not there is in fact uh, a food access issue, right? So it's not just about the adequacy of the food, but it is how people are connected to that food. So in some cities, people will have to switch buses maybe three times mm. to the grocery store. Um, mm -hmm. And that means carrying those bags on public yes. transportation and switching from bus to bus to get back home. So uh, transportation is, is a huge issue in the uh, Right. Uh, so lack of grocery stores, right? Um, you may not have transportation, but there also might be some um, difficulty reaching the um, reaching the stores, certainly. But also once you're there, if the selection of products isn't what you need to eat healthily, then that can be a problem, right? And, and in urban areas, that can be a real concern about having access to that fresh, fresh food. Yeah, so I know I'm really excited about our next conversation when we're going to be joined by our colleagues, uh, as I said, from IU Bloomington, who are going to talk about how our students are working together and working with Bob and Pastor Curtis to expand this partnership. And um, we can share with you not only what we will be um, have accomplished for this past year, but what our plans are and for the future. You ready for our next conversation, Bob? Absolutely. We're also looking forward uh, to working with Cure on additional eco-friendly mobile farm stand projects uh, in Northwest Indiana and uh, throughout the whole state of Indiana. So we're definitely uh, looking forward to the opportunity to uh, talk more about that and let, letting people know and become aware of our project and our program and our partnership and to expand. As are we. Wonderful. Thank you, Bob and Ellen, for taking the time to engage in this conversation. And thank you to our viewers. If you enjoyed this video, then please let us know by liking it. If you would like to learn more, then please check out the resource list that's in the description for this video. You can also subscribe to our channel so that you won't miss the next video in which we will be hearing from more of our partners on the eco-friendly mobile farm stand project. Thank you and have a great day.